All right. Good evening and welcome to Trinity Pauling School Pride Perspective webinar series on stories of transformation. My name is Tom Densford. I'm the Director of Advancement, Engagement, and Operations here at Trinity Pauling School. I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time here um, to be a part of tonight's webinar. Um, some of our esteemed alumni about how to how Trinity Pauling has transformed their lives through education and community. The webinar is recorded and, and will be posted on our website. Thank you to uh, those that submitted questions and we'll be monitoring the chat throughout the conversation. If you would like to add any questions, please just add them in the into the chat feature and we will get through as many as we can throughout the night. Um, if we do not get to your question, someone will reach out to you um, sometime this week to address that over the phone. At this time, I'd like to introduce our host for tonight's webinar, Mr. Bill Taylor. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Uh, great to see uh, our alumni here tonight. I haven't seen some of your faces in, so, in, in a while, so uh, thank you for taking the time. I'm going to ask each of you to, uh, to introduce yourself, please. All right. I am Richard Bolden Jr. Uh, I'm the class of 2020, so fun year. Uh, and I attended TP for two years, and I live in uh, Mount Vernon, uh, New York, and I'm currently at Stony Brook University in my senior year last semester. Thanks, Rich. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordy Jefferson. I'm the class of 17. I uh, came to Trinity Pauling as a repeat sophomore, grade 10, and I was... Uh, at Trinity Pauling for a uh, fantastic three years. And right now I currently live and work in New York City as a reinsurance broker. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Daniel Parker, class of 2007. I know that seems like a long time ago, but I promise you guys, I'm not that old. I am the oldest panelist. It's the first time ever. Um, <laughs> I uh, currently live in Boston, Massachusetts. I attended Trinity Pauling for four years. Um, and um, I work for J.P. Morgan Chase um, and support on the credit card for the New England region. Hey guys, I'm uh, Paul Razumovich. Um, I'm class of 2016. I was was at Trinity Pauling for a postgraduate year, um, and then after there, I played four years of lacrosse at Cornell, and then since then, I'm living in New York City, and I'm working um, in valuation and advisory and commercial real estate, working on hotels. Yeah, great. Well, the first question I have is not really, well, it'll, it'll be a question, but it, it's, uh, you know, we we changed our schedule here today because of the eclipse. So we actually began with athletics this morning, uh, and then we started classes around 1030, and uh, uh, we had the last class be the time for the eclipse, so everybody got to go out and wear their glasses and watch the eclipse. Uh, so my question is you, did you get the same accommodation at your jobs? So I, I, I will certainly say I did. I got to get out early and go out with my son um, at his school, actually, um, and uh, and get to watch the eclipse um, and spend some time with my, with my son. So that was amazing. I was also fortunate enough. We have a roof deck attached to the 22nd floor of our Midtown Manhattan office that the uh, the folks in, in office were able to go out and enjoy for 45 minutes or so and catch up and Watch the eclipse, exactly. Yeah, same here. I was able to get outside today and just check that out. I thought it was thought it was pretty cool. I remember the last one I think was 2017 when we when we just got to college. So pretty cool though. Now it was able to get out and uh and see a little bit of it in between classes. So it was it was good. Well, uh, we actually had an earthquake here on uh Friday. So uh it's been uh, sort of a, a weekend, uh, and we had lot, lots of heavy rain before that. So uh, we've seen a lot of nature here. So uh, it's been interesting. Uh, so I guess my first question is, um, how did Trinity Pauling prepare you all for college? I, I guess I'll start us off. Um, so one of the things that I love to highlight about Trinity Pauling um, I played I played football in college, and um, it was always amazing to me how hard it was for other individuals to go to class. Right, um, just the basics of 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 being able to get up every morning, put yourself together, put your best foot forward, 
um, making sure that you show up to things. Um, you know, that was that was something that really that Trinity Pauling really helped me out with in my time. So when I got to college, I'm like, uh, you know, I'd say to teammates and, and friends of mine, it's like, guys, first first step is just going to to class. Right. Which when we think about it, right, for us, when we go to Trinity Pauling, it becomes easy for us because, it, you know, it, it's what we learn to do. Um, you know, but for, for some people that don't have the experience of Trinity Pauling, uh, just that basic step can sometimes be a hard step for them, especially as they move into, uh, into a college. I would definitely like to, uh, piggyback off of what, uh, Daniel just said. Um, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I definitely feel that TP instilled a voice in me. Now, when I came to TP, I had a voice. Um, but what I will say is that it, um, I was a part of a program, the lead program, um, and basically in that program, you know, uh, you just learn a lot of fundamental um, things of like sentence structure and um, different things um, of that nature. Um, and one thing that it was able, I was able to benefit from that program is when I got to college, you know, sometimes it can, it can be a little stressful um, trying to figure out, you know, uh, how your accommodations are going to be met and different things of that nature. Um, and so, you know, voicing, you know, making my voice heard of like, you know, okay, so go to the professor and, you know, speaking to them about, you know, what I need, you know, our test accommodations and um, things like that. It all came from TP. Yeah, more, more or less the same line, excuse me, more or less along the same lines. I, I think um, the routine and, and the time management were two things that prepared me immensely for student athlete life in college. I played four years of hockey at Hamilton College in, in Clinton, New York. And um, I'll, I'll echo what, what the two gentlemen before me said, getting up every morning for chapel at 8 a.m., tying your tie, getting yourself together, um, having more or less kind of the same schedule every single day and, and being able to have a to-do list, knock off different items to be able to go into practice at 4 p.m. with a clear mind, ready to focus on hockey, ready to focus on cross-country running. Um, all of that helped me through college and, and currently right now in, in professional life as well as has been a, a big, big uh, plus. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just to piggyback on you guys too, is I mean, I think Trinity Pauling, um, really taught me how to be like a very well-rounded member of member of the community, whether that's on a playing field, in the classroom, just out in the community. But the value of preparation and discipline were really instilled at TP. And I think that's something that I really carried with me through Cornell and then through my personal life and professional life. Um, I think one of the examples I had was kind of like you guys are saying with practice is it'd be the discipline to be able to go to that practice at four o'clock to seven o'clock, be exhausted and still go to the library at eight o'clock and write that paper, even though you're tired or whatever it may be. It's having that discipline to take care of what you need to do um, and just being a leader in, in the community and just showing other people how it's done. So it's kind of my experience there. You know, Richard, you said, <clears throat> mentioned something about sort of the confidence and the comfort speaking to a professor that, you know, Trinity Pauling is a pretty small environment. The classes are small. You know, Paul, you were in my class. It was a very conversation-based class. Uh, I don't think you're probably even aware when you're here as a student just how confident you are becoming in speaking to teachers and speaking to one another. And, uh, you, know, you know, Richard, you already said that you had that confidence going to college. Is that something that the rest of you also found that when you got to college, you, you could advocate for yourself, that you could go to a professor if you needed to, and just have that confidence in speaking publicly. Yeah, I, I would, I would say definitely um, being able to, to kind of go, go to bat for yourself as a, as a 15, 16, 17 year old, I think is, is massive in building that confidence and, and being able to, to vouch for yourself. And um, I, I learned that it's okay to be well, you want to be kind of always a team player or, or something along those lines. Uh, there is a time and place to be to be selfish and, and look after yourself and um, do what's in your own best interest to to help you keep the ball rolling and whatever that may be, academics, athletics. Um, so it, exactly, Mr. Taylor, I think I think that um, learning how to speak up and be an advocate for yourself starts at TP. At least it did for me, and I'm very grateful for for that lesson I learned. 
Yeah. yeah I th- I th- oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think to that point, Jordy, is just, I think a lot of challenges come up um, kind of as you go through your first couple of years of college, your first couple of years of professional and just regular life. And I, th- I think taking that initiative of being able to say, okay, I got to advocate for myself and just really like things can get very scary at first and they can feel like the walls are closing in a little bit as things get a little bit more challenging in life. Um, and so being able to lean on the people around you and just take the initiative there and really advocate for yourself, but go ahead. Didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 Paul, not at all. Um, I would just add on to that. Um, you know, when you think about it, right, when you, you go into college, um, you know, having that process in, in place, I know we kind of alluded to it. Um, and then I think you, you take the next step and, you know, my experience was, you know, because I knew how to do it, because I had that process in place, um, you know, I had others that leaned on me, which allowed me to develop, you know, some more leadership traits and and be able to help guys that, you know, might have needed some extra support and, um, you know, help people help people through some challenging times, you know, as well as being able to have that process in place when I needed I needed help and I needed support and I needed to find somebody or or, or navigate through those situations. Now, you some of you have alluded to um, you know an awareness of preparation as it relates to your professional life. You've had a lot of other formative experiences after Trinity Pauling that have helped you prepare for your you know professional life. But are there aspects of your professional life that you sometimes may sort of think at the end of the day, you know that you know I learned that at TP. I. I think I think dealing with not de- dealing might be the wrong word interacting and I guess in the professional life it's more so dealing with folks that are that are different from you and you wouldn't normally interact with so for myself it's kind of been hockey guys have been kind of friends automatically and at TP I was afforded the opportunity to get involved in a variety of different things different clubs um had never touched a lacrosse stick in my life some of my best buddies are lacrosse players uh in these days so um, just having getting outside of your lane and your comfort zone and and being able to interact with all sorts of different folks with different ideas, different opinions um, translates into college and and obviously well beyond in the in the professional world where where people definitely do tend to be a little bit more selfish and uh, hard nosed and you have to learn how to kind of um, advocate for yourself, I guess the company and 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 drive on. I'd echo that. Um, you know, I think there's a sense of, um, you know, humility, um, you know, being, being well-rounded and, and well-versed, um, you know, you know, across different fields, it can really help you deepen relationships with people. Um, you know, when you go into situations, at least in my, in my role, when I go into situations, I have, you know, a pretty good ability to, you know, um, you know, think about social emotional and, be able to, um, you know, uh, integrate with people and, and have great conversations, you know, all things, you know, to what Jordy just said, you know, having to do, you know, three sports a year, and then, you know, the arts, and, you know, a lot of the different things that we have at TP, um, that just give you that background, uh, as you go into the working world. Paul, you're muted. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, I would say just the ability to kind of work individually um, and also collaboratively. Um, I think this has kind of been a big thing for me through college and now um, just because like a position I played in a sport was very individualized, but we're still going towards this uh, common goal. Um, But that same stuff in your work life and just kind of bringing that in there. Um, But then also from a social perspective, kind of being able to build that network and just like you have anyone from Trinity Pauling you could talk to at any time and just just being able to lean on that network and find common ground, kind of like Jordy was saying, and just being able to, like he said, the hockey players, if like, yeah, same thing. If I see somebody with a sports thing, it's easy to connect or whether or not it's something else. But I think it's just the ability to connect with people of a variety of different backgrounds is what I would say. Uh, Talk a little bit about perhaps the impact of the effort system or what we now call the effort challenge in uh, helping your transition into college and then professionally. 
I see you smiling, Daniel. You, you yeah, Daniel, you, you <laughs> take the lead on this one. Your smile uh, makes uh, me so, a little concerned by your answer, Daniel. <laughs> I'll be the I'll be the vulnerable one here and tell you guys. Okay. That, you know, like the the effort system for me in the beginning was was a little bit of a challenge. Okay, or the effort challenge. All right. Uh, as the eldest alum here, I will tell you it was a little bit different when I went to when I went to TP. Um, but again, you know, um, throughout the time at Trinity Paul and you, you know, you kind of don't even see it, right? You're like, oh, well, you know, like, I, I might not want to go to chapel today or, you know, like at, at when I was there, right? Like, I don't want to go to breakfast today or, you know, but again, those inherent qualities, those qualities that are, you know, continue to build. And by the time you come in as a freshman to the time you leave as a senior, right? Um, sort of like what we were talking um through before, when you get to college, I mean, you know, it, it, it makes all of the tasks um, in that world so much easier, um, you know, and, and you know what, I always like to say to um, the effort challenge, what it did for me was, you know, it, it showed me that my hard work, um, you know, and, and the time that I put in means something, right? Like when we talk about it in some of the other places and other institutions, it's grades, 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 grades. Grades, 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 grades. Well, the effort challenge rewards you for your hard work, um, which I think that translates over into college. But also, when you get to the working world, um, you know, you know, I see, I see coworkers, and they're like three o'clock, time to go home. You know, I'm there until six. You know, and and that can really carry over from a relationship standpoint, a development standpoint, a career standpoint. And you know, I, I equate all that stuff back to the effort challenge. I would definitely uh, agree. Everything that uh, Daniel just said, um, except from my experience, um, I I love the effort challenge. I mean, it was for me before I got to TP. Um, I struggled tremendously, like throughout grammar school all the way up to to high school. And um, I, you know, you reach a certain point. At least I reached a certain point where I was just kind of like upset with myself because I put so much work into my studies. I was going to tutoring all, all different kinds of things. And it just didn't seem like it was paying off. And then um, I never forget um, coach law, LaFontaine, he's not there anymore, but uh, he was the football hook coach. And uh, we were sitting in the room and he said, listen, he says, you know, I know I'll be very vulnerable right now. I failed geometry three times before I got to TP. So I'll just put that out there from now. And he happened to be uh, the geometry teacher as well. And he says, listen, he says, I know that, you know, everyone has different learning styles. And just from that sentence alone, I felt like he understood where I was coming from. Because sometimes in the academic world, um, before I got to TP, they, uh, a lot of teachers only taught one way. And um, that doesn't cater to everybody because you have visual learners. You have people that, you know, more listeners or whatever, whatever the case is. Um, I'm a little bit of both. But anyway, to wrap this all up, um, I got to TP and um, with help of the effort system and all the, you know, the teachers helps and everything like that, um, it made my time there uh, very, very good. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of you kind of, you kind of make your own breaks and, and create your own luck. And I think the the best way to to kickstart that is is by effort and putting your best foot forward. And I think at TP, getting into that routine, um, kind of moving the goalposts forward, so to speak, every single day, kind of block by block, um, task by task is is um massively important to creating those breaks and and getting lucky, so to speak. But I mean, you have to you have to work hard to have good things come your way, I think, in, in the effort system and um is is the perfect way to kind of instill that in a in a 15, 16, 17 year old um young man. Yeah, I mean I, I think the um the effort system is like a really good way to just build a standard of excellence. Um that I'm not even sure that when we were at Trinity Paul and we really realized that we were building. Um, because I was saying like I think that like when we're there, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, why why do I need to put effort into this? This doesn't translate onto the playing field or 
whatever it may be. And then as you kind of get a little bit older, you realize that it's the little things and really just focusing on the details that, that make these things great. And um, yeah, just building out that standard of excellence and just doing, doing the hard little things when you don't want to do it. And just kind of like Jordy saying, just keep, keep uh, moving that field goal post down there. Now that you're out of Trinity Paul and you're doing other things, what do you look back on and miss the most out of out of your Trinity Pauling experience? I would say definitely uh spending time with the boys. Uh it that was always such like a fun time. Um and now that I look back on it, what's so funny is that I I was actually speaking to my mom about this the other day, and I'm like, man, like I was a day student. So um you know, afterwards, you know, after class and everything, I would, you know, kind of hang back and like, uh, you know, play video games, whatever. Um, but now I look back and I'm like, man, if I could just, you know, go back to TP and do it all over again, I would do it just for TP, not for any other school. For TP, I would though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I miss being a high school age young man with a, a lot less responsibility. That's for sure. Um, uh, but all all kidding aside, I guess absolutely miss just kind of hanging around with the guys and and um making those memories and and some of the fondest and stay that have stay and will continue to stay with me for the rest of my life and I think to kind of reiterate what I said before um I think having all kinds of opportunity whether it be joining a new club playing a new sport um taking a new class whatever it may be just kind of getting out of your lane I think now that I am in the corporate world and it's a little bit more diff difficult for me to to find unique things to to be able to step out of my lane. I wish I had kind of taken advantage of all of those things more to to um push myself, become more rounded and and kind of get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Um so I miss kind of to wrap it up all of the opportunity to to become uncomfortable that Trinity Pauling afforded afforded myself and and all of us. Um, yeah, I would, I would say, I mean, it's hard not to say spending time with the guys. I mean, that's just a certain amount of time together over a certain period that we're just never going to be able to kind of recreate ever, ever again in life. And I think it says something that I'm still best friends with some of the kids I went to Trinity Pauling with. And I was saying, like, I thought I was going to be there for a year. I thought it was going to be in and out, like nothing really go on. And I'm still best friends with at least like 10 of those kids. And I think one of the most special things during my playing experience was I remember um, we were playing Hobart and Justin Scott was a big, a, one of their better players. And just seeing him doing so well, I was like, oh, I'm so like, it was just that genuine pride for one of my TP brothers um, who was killing it in lacrosse and just doing really well at that time. So I mean, I think it's that thing and then just kind of being able to connect with like some of some of these guys like later on in life and just you don't realize how strong these connections are that you build and they really just they really just keep going down the road. It's it's a beautiful thing, though. Uh, I'm going to go with the coat and tie, uh, everybody, because uh, in the working world, we don't I mean, I wear jeans and a jacket and a shirt every day. I don't have to wear a tie. So I I, I miss that a little bit. Um but I, I would I would overall say the sense of community, right? Um, you know, TP has this this special atmosphere about it. Um, you know, where everybody's on the same page, same sort of mission moving forward. Um, you know, and I always say, you know, it's it's a safe place, it's a safe space, right? Where you can develop, and you know, you and your brothers are developing as one and growing. And um, you know, when you get out into the world, you know, it's. You know, it's, it's you, your friends, your family, right? Um, where, you know, TP was, was that place for me where it was a community. We all competed together, right? We hung out together. Um, you know, we went through the good times, the rough times together, right? Um, all on one mission just to become better uh, young men. You know, um, you know, I miss that from time to time. One of the things that uh, that there's growing concern over, I know certainly some of the parents, of uh, our present students, probably some of the, I'm sure some of the parents of our current students have concerns about is the uh, the influence of technology uh, and technology as a distraction, technology as uh, uh, sort of a, a consumer of time. Uh, so, you know, 
Richard, you're still in college. Uh, you know, Paul and Jordy, you're 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 well, you know, you're not that far from it. Uh, <laughs> Daniel, you you had the flip phone probably. Uh, <laughs> the razor, the razor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, what are your thoughts now? Uh, you know, and Daniel, maybe as a as a parent, you could share some of your your perspectives. Uh, you know, we. You know, here at Trinity Pauling, we we monitor it. We will do our best to shut the internet down at a certain time. But I mean, that means we're shutting the Wi-Fi down. You never shut the internet down. Um, so you know, we try to do our best to 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 uh, to have it not be uh, a detriment. But uh, what you know, what's your experience, or what are your thoughts on technology and and its impact on young people today? Uh, you guys want me to lead? I'll I'll lead off. Um, so, you know, te- I I did have a flip phone. Um, so technology is in a different place. Um, you know, uh, just just overall, you know, I, I don't think that you can fight it. You know, I think that you have to embrace it. Um, and be able to leverage it for what it is. Um, uh, what you need to use it for. Um, the thing that I I worry about sometimes and. You know, my son goes to an independent school, um, you know, and, and, and my daughter goes to an independent school as well. Um, you know, and I, I, I really do credit them with making sure that the screen time doesn't take over. Right. And, and that's the thing I think we can work together with technology and we can use it and leverage it for for what it's needed for. Um, you know, I just consistently say to the to some of the younger people now, don't let it take over. Right. We still want to make sure that you're critically thinking through the process. Um, and I experience that every day in my in, in, in what I do for work. You know, I'm constantly saying to people, right, like critically think, right, like think through the process, think about think about what you're doing. Yes, we have resources, but still, I always say people do business with people, right? And you got to be able to think through the process, come up with a solution, be able to relate to people, and then use technology as a resource, um, you know, to back you up. So. Um, I, I know I might be a little bit older school now, I guess, but that's where I see technology. We got to work with it. We got to leverage it where we can, but um, we can't let it replace us and replace our thought process. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think kind of to piggyback off that, I just I think it's really important um, to educate yourself on what's out there. Um, but in addition to that, you also have to know kind of what the limits are with whatever technology that you're working with. Um, personally, we work a lot um, with Excel, kind of working out some models of hotel um, portfolios that we look at. And we recently implemented a chat GPT thing in there. And while there's parts of that that we can use and utilize the technology, there's also certain aspects that you just can't replace a human for. Um, so kind of just being able to know, OK, this is how we can speed up our processes and kind of utilize our time the best way. But then also knowing, OK, I'm not putting something completely wrong out there. Um, but, yeah, just educating yourself and making sure to just stay up with the times and everything, but but know the limits as well. I would definitely say. Um, during my like time at TP, uh, there was definitely a healthy balance. Um, of technology versus not having the technology. So like, for instance, um, what, a, what a lot of the teachers would say is like, you know, you could bring your laptop because we may be able to, you know, uh, utilize, you know, I might have you guys look up something real quick um, so you guys can see it for yourselves. And then we'll put the laptops back away or, you know, do different things like that. So I think going off of what everybody pretty much just said, having a healthy balance um, and, and realizing that technology is great. Um, but there's nothing like, you know, just, just going out and, you know, seeing things, you know, reading about it or, you know, read the book or, you know, speaking to somebody or whatever the case is. Yeah. Yeah. I guess just to, to sum it up, I, I agree with, with all, I don't think you can fight it. And I think it's, it's incumbent upon everybody to, to learn the best use cases for it. Um, especially in, in my, young professional career it's been uh there's been some moments where i've been the the young hip guy on the floor that knows how to how to 
plug in something in, in Excel or navigate something on the computer, which is a, a huge added benefit to the, to the company and to the, to the project that we're working on. So there's definitely massive upside to, to being able how to, to being able to use it and know how to use it correctly. And I think um, when I was at, at TP 16, 17, um, 2016, 2017, I remember we started implementing kind of video classes and um, creative work like that. And I, I'm uh, positive that that still goes on. And it's really cool to see what what the students are now producing with with all of that, uh, with all of the new capabilities. And um, I hope it continues because I think as you as you grow up and become a professional, being able to know what it is, know what you're using and how to use it is is massive. Before we transition to sort of <clears throat> my next question, which will be what advice do you have for today's students? But um, I got to ask one thing because, you know, if you're if you give me the answer, I don't think you'll give me, then I have to stop advising the kids today. Tell me you're not playing Fortnite at your desk. <laughs> It'd be a pretty quick exit, I think, if I got caught doing that. <laughs> Bill, 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 I'll do you. I'll do you one better. One of my buddies who didn't go to TPS. Okay, I was visiting him, and he had his his screen set up in his uh, in his office. And he says he turns to me and he goes, "Dan, this is the best thing ever during COVID." He goes, "Dan, the best. This is the best thing ever." They think I'm working. I'm just playing Call of Duty all day, and and my head kind of like spun around. So no, I do not. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, so what advice do you have for today's students about anything at TP? I would just say uh, just just one thought off off the off the top here is I mean just to really lean into everything kind of going on I mean I wouldn't say no to any opportunity once you once you get to Trinity Pauling I mean there's an opportunity to learn a bunch of new things and you can go all sorts of different ways with your learning path and kind of just connecting with different teachers by talking to them and just kind of getting out of your shell, asking questions that you really want to learn about and things like that. And then whether it's trying a new sport, trying a new club, trying a new project, working with a different person, there's a lot of things. And I know Jordy uh, re referenced it earlier, but the opportunity to kind of get to be uncomfortable and kind of get comfortable being uncomfortable and I think you don't realize it when you're in it, but Trinity Pauling really does give you so many opportunities to challenge yourself and to grow and kind of bring that into your professional and personal life. And I think that was kind of the biggest thing for me. And like I said, I was at Trinity Pauling for one year. I thought it was going to be a quick in and out and ended up loving it. Love the kids that I've met there. Still, still am in touch with a lot of them. And it really was one of the best experiences of my life. So that's just something I want to say, but I'll hand it off to these guys now. I'll I'll give Richard and Daniel a second to be a little bit more creative than I am going to be right now, but <laughs> absolutely uh, echo echo Paul there. And um, there's a saying: "Be a sponge, soak it in." Uh, I think I think it behooves everyone to to be a better listener than you are a speaker. And there's there's a ton of great people at at Trinity Pauling um, that you can listen to and learn a, a, a learn a great deal from. So. Um, dive in and, and soak it all in and uh, don't waste a second. I would uh, definitely agree. Um, and I would say challenge yourself to get to know people for who they are. Um, I think that that's crucial um, because, you know, you really get to learn about other cultures. You get to um, learn, like, for instance, I have uh, one of my friends, Alex, uh, he lived uh, or he lives in China. And, uh, you know, before he went back home for spring break, he said, Rich, he says, when I come back, I'm gonna bring you some herbal teas uh, from from back home. And so I was like, oh, man, like that's that's cool. Totally forgot about the conversation. And then weeks later, he finally came home. He says, they they let me bring it. They let me bring it. And he and he just gives me the herbal tea. And it's in this beautiful um like uh, vase type of type of thing. And, uh, you know, he explained to me, you know, the background of it and, you know, why it was so significant. Um, so, you know, just just learning about different cultures um, is, you know, and where people come from and, you know, just just in general, I think is really important. And that's something that, you know, you can learn at, at TP. 
Yeah, I echo everything, um, you know, the other guy said, but what I would add to that, um, you know, it's, it's a special time, right? Um, you know, being afforded the opportunity to go to TPS. Um, you know, I, you know, I always look back at it now, having gone through college and having my own kids and, um, you know, being in the working world. Um, what's interesting about TPS is <clears throat> you have that environment, but it's like a family, right? So, you know, the people there care about you, right? And, you know, I, I have this conversation with my son all the time. Actually, we had it after basketball practice today, right? And, you know, he's doing great and, you know, but he's six years old. So, you know, like we have a, a great conversation about how, you know, like, you know, me as a father is here to support you and love you, um, you know, but also to tell you, you know, where you can do better at, right? Like what you're, a, what, what you're capable of, what you can achieve. Um, you know, and for me, when I was at TPS, um, you know, I would say, you know, like th that's the support system that I had. Um, and so my advice to, to everybody that's at TPS or any prospective people that are going to come to TPS is to make sure you take advantage of that, right? Like understand people there are there to support you and help you, right? So that when you come out on the back end, right, like you're stronger than when you came in, right? Um, you know, and, and that you have a support system there um, that cares for you and wants you to, to grow and develop and do great things. Um, so it's a short period of time. Sometimes you can, you know, be blinded by the fact that maybe there's no girls, um, right, or, or, or study hall, right? But, you know, like those are all minimal things to, um, you know, the, the, um, the benefits that will come out on the back end. So enjoy, enjoy the time while you're there. My next question is related, and you can't give the same answer. But uh, what advice would you give to your Trinity Pauling version of yourself back then? What advice would you give now to that yourself back at Trinity Pauling? And it can't be what you just said. I I would say, Mr. Taylor, coming coming from Canada no one really told me the importance of the SAT and the ACT <laughs> right off the bat. Um, and I, and I struggled with it, but over time I was able to take it enough times and, and um, finally understand the gravity that it held in terms of my future, going to college, being able to play sports at the best academic institution possible. Um, for myself, that would be the first thing I would say, take those things as seriously as possible and, and make sure you're on top of it. And then the second would be do everything right now that you can in your ability, lean on all the people um, you possibly can to set yourself up academically, athletically, artistically, whatever it may be, whatever you're into, um, do those things while you're at TP because the resources you have while you're there to help you succeed in those things are um, second to none. And, and just kind of, you said not to say the same thing, but to lean in and, and, and really, really dig into those resources and those opportunities for sure. I would say uh, for me, I was pretty involved um, on campus, but um, now thinking back, um, I just wish I was more involved. Let me break it down. I was a prefect when I was there. Um, I, you know, did uh, go, um, was fortunate to go to um, like a missionary trip to, to Africa. Um, and, you know, I was a part of like clubs and stuff like that, but I often felt like after classes, I was just rushing to go home. Like I was a part of those things, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I showed up to those clubs. Um, and so now, you know, I'm, I'm thinking back and I, I talk about, it may just seem like I'm just saying this just for the webinar, which trust me, I'm not. Um, but I often talk to my mom about things that I just wish I would have done differently and that's actually one of the things that you know that I speak about like I wish I would have spent more time on campus going uh for instance at the very at the tail end um I joined the knitting club I would have never thought that I'd be sitting there with um uh, with uh Miss Poiker at that time and uh Miss uh I'm blanking on the name but different teachers just sitting there knitting um, and we, you know, we would talk about gossip and all, all different types of things like TV shows and oh, it was great. 
Um, but those are the moments, you know, prompting. That's the that's the great thing about TP is that um at my previous schools, it uh like theater also um kind of interfered with athletics. So but at TP, I was able to, you know, do theater and then afterwards go to extra help and like do different things like that. So just getting more involved, I would say, consistently. Um, uh, not to sound cheesy, I honestly wouldn't really change much about my Trinity Pauling experience or give that much different advice. I honestly had the opportunity to play sports at one of the highest levels in the country in that level, um, explore all my academic goals and kind of really expand where I wanted to go there. Um, and then also just meet a bunch of different people from different places in the world. Um, I, I'm not sure, headmaster, I'm not sure I was a, a dorm person what was that pre not a pre proctor Pro i was a proctor um so like i was able to kind of interact with some of the younger kids and really just get a good experience across the um across the board i mean the only thing i would say is just to try to interact with even more kids at trinity pauling um it really goes to show just how great how good of people we have here and just keeps on going as the years go on which is a great thing to see uh, I would say two things. One is um, I'm I'm older now, so you guys are going to laugh at me. But one is try not to be so cool, right? Like, you know, you're trying to be cool at that age and, you know, um, do certain things to to be, quote unquote, cool. Um, right. And the other thing I would say is um, just be more dynamic. Right. Um, I wish I would have been more dynamic. I wish I was I was a proctor as well. Um, right. Uh, it's a little late to the game because, you know, I look at it now and I go, man, I wish I would have been a prefect. Right. Um, you know, and I wish I would have had that thought process while I was there, um, you know, uh, and, and just being more dynamic and the people that the people um, that I interacted with. Right. Like things outside of sports. Um, right. And making sure um, that I understood a little bit more and, and you know, put put my best foot forward. Um, you know, a little bit farther forward, um, you know, and 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 could have uh, could have uh, done a little bit better there. That would be my thing. Some great answers. Thank you very much. Uh, Tom Densford, do we have any questions that have come in? Yeah, we've got one here from John. Um, I think it's a great question. What is uh, what is some of the biggest adversity that you had to overcome to succeed? And so what was the one of the biggest adversities that you had to overcome when you came to Trinity Pauling or or at while you were here at Trinity Pauling? Hmm. It's a good question. <laughs> I would I would I'll I'll kick us off here. I th I think I think getting out of your shell is, is a tough thing inherently in general people like being comfortable and, and going up to someone that's sitting alone in scully or whatever and, and grabbing a seat saying hey introducing yourself like that's a tough thing to do and I, I wasn't particularly good at it when I came into TP I was um, used to kind of interacting with like-minded similar people um, and so to, to make that step to introduce myself um, was a challenge at first and something that I I overcame and and became pretty good at and it has helped me immensely going forward and, and where I sit today I like to think I'm a pretty outgoing personable guy and and I think I like to think that TP um taught me a great deal about how to how to be good at that and how to how to build that into my character and, and who I am today I yeah I think I kind of to that point Jordy um something that was super helpful I mean it was very challenging at first not challenging but at first coming out of Trinity Pauling not knowing anyone I was kind of a little bit intimidated oh I'm not going to know anyone like it's going to be hard to get to know kids my like some of my friends at this point were going off to college um but then you give it one week of being at Trinity Pauling you have all these new friends and things are going well um it it's just it just goes to show um kind of what Trinity Pauling teaches you kind of get through those hard times, be able to make those connections. And then I was able to bring that. And I don't think I would have had as smooth as a transition to Cornell and playing in college um, if I didn't go to Trinity Pauling. So I'm super thankful for that. Um, and just other areas of life too. You're just, you're able to interact with people in just a lot of different areas. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I can I can share next. Uh, my my greatest adversity, um, you know, was I, I think was getting on on the on the same page as a freshman, right? You know, just trying to trying to buck the system and you know trying to figure out ways to not go to chapel and figure out ways to not go to bre- uh, breakfast and you know um, you know uh, you know back in my day we had we had what was called work crew. Right. Um, you know, figure out what work crew worked the best that I didn't have to put in the most effort. Right. Um, and that's the reality as a freshman. Right. Because it, for me, it was a culture shock. Um, you know, so, you know, getting my my mind on the same page and understanding the why behind it and buying into it. That took me a little bit of time. Um, and, you know, as I as, as I started to let go of that, you know, it, it was it became a great place. And. And I saw, you know, uh, the reason why it's there. Great. I would say for me, um, so I went to TP, I did a repeat junior year and then um, did senior year. Um, And I think when I first got there, I think it was it was mentally tough for me in the sense that you know, in my mind, I was like, man, my friends are already going into senior year, then they'll be going to college and I'll still be in high school. And I think that was one of the things that kind of kept me from like fully being able to just, you know, just do, you know, all the things that TP was, you know, offering um, at that time. But then once I started to just kind of realize, you know what, once people kind of get to college or, or just after high school in general, everyone goes their own way. Some people, you know, pursue a trade. Some people pursue college, all, all different types of things. And we all kind of create our own path in life. And then once I realized that, it made it a much smoother, you know, transition for the for the long run. That's great. Thank you, guys. Hey, another one um, came in from Chris. Uh, was there one particular experience at TP that was a critical impact in your life? Is there one thing you can look back and and think of an experience at TP that that truly impacted your life that um, is is you can you can lean on today? Yeah, I can kick us off again because this is pretty. I, I tell this quite often when people ask me my story and how how did how did you end up in New York City? I remember very vividly. I was, I think it was my first year, my sophomore year at TP, and I joined the outing club led by Michelle Carlin at the time, and she led a trip to New York City. And I remember coming. She had a whole itinerary of of things for us to do. We went and saw the nine eleven memorial, that whole thing. Walked around the city and. Um, it was my first time I had ever been here and it really kind of opened my eyes to, to what was out there and, um, what a monstrous <laughs> city that never sleeps kind of rings true now that I live it every day. So, um, that's it kind of that experience and me coming to visit while I was still at Trinity polling is, is a major, major reason as to why I live and work here today. Wonderful. Wonderful. I think for me, it, it, it would be multiple instances. And, um, you know, I'm sure everybody here knows the Reeds, right? Mr. Reed was my advisor. Um, and Mrs. Reed um, was probably equally my advisor. Um, you know, and, you know, and I just talked about, you know, getting on the same page for me was challenging. And, you know, the patience that that they had and the times we would have at the time they had a dog, the dog's name was Hazel. So it was a different dog than they have now. Right. Uh, but the walks with Mr. Reed, um, you know, going into Mrs. Reed's office and, you know, um, even when I'm, I'm sitting here thinking that, you know, they're probably going to be upset with me. Right. Like, they were never upset with me. Right. They helped me through it. And and those th- those things for me, um, you know, have transcended through when we think about patience. Um, right. And we think about, you know, like I said earlier, critically thinking through a process and, you know, um, not getting worked up on things. Right. Um, you know, remaining calm. Um, so those those were transformative moments for me um, and being able to see that and 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 talk through that with with the reads. Yeah, I'm, if uh, I'll share next, um, I think in addition to the good times, I think kind of what was very formative for me was kind of some of the tougher times at Trinity Pauling. And why I say that is because in these times, if we lost a tough game or something bad happened, the people around you would pick you up and kind of get you back to that next level of what you're trying to accomplish. Um, but that's also if you were struggling in a class, like a teacher, I remember we had Ryan Henry, who was my favorite 
my favorite teacher at Trinity Pauling, sorry, Mr. Taylor, um, but from a math perspective, um, and he just would take every minute to work with you, whether it was after school, doing extra work and just taking his time because he really genuinely cared about you um, or whether it's in the weight room with a coach to doing extra work or something, stuff like that. Everyone at Trinity Pauling genuinely cares and wants to see you succeed. So when you are down or when somebody is having a tough time, it's really great to see how everyone kind of rallies around that. Now, I would definitely um, agree with what everyone um, has just said. For me, I would say that um, a pivotal moment for me uh, is like with Ms. Daniels. I don't know if Ms. Daniels is still there, but Ms. Daniels and Ms. Kellogg, um, they were both uh, one of the, uh, a part of the lead program as well. And um, they would break things down to me um, because sometimes at face value, things seem one way. And then I'm like, but I'm just not understanding, you know, what, you know, how do we get to this? And so, you know, for instance, uh, like uh, sentence structure, I, I pointed that out earlier in the presentation. Um, I struggled, oh man, I struggled with writing papers and um, all of that. And um, now I'm in college and the other day I get an email from um from one of my professors and the headliner of the email is you're an outstanding student. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, that's it's great. And so um, and basically she goes on to just say that my writing is phenomenal. And to the point where she wants me to be um a teacher's assistant over the summer. And all I could think about was when I got to TP, how horrible, I mean, I would put periods <laughs> everywhere. I put commas, just throw them in there and all different types of things. And, you know, it's, it's because of TP, you know, with the, with the Phoenix flashcards, I hated it in the moment, but now I look back and I'm like, you know what, I might have to order me, you know, order me some, some cards for home, just go over it. <laughs> so I would definitely say that's one of the pivotal moments. That's wonderful. Um, what a great story from, from everyone. It's, uh, it's a place where, uh, trying to find your place, um, uh, and then, and then having adults around you that allow you to, to be you and, uh, grow beside you, not in front of you, not behind you, but beside you and walk with you through that journey. And, and I'm grateful to, to hear these stories tonight. Mr. Taylor and I are, are, um, are very fortunate to travel the country and hear stories from from all over the all over the world about TP graduates and alumni that are that are out there. Um, but it is important that uh, that we share um, you share your stories, your transformational stories with with the community. And it is a community. It's a there's there's no better time to be part of a community, um, and especially a boys community and, and being an all boys school and being together. And I think you've hit on some of um, a lot of those points tonight of what it's like to be at an all boys school. And, and you think you might miss out, but you're not missing anything. You're actually gaining more than you're missing. Um, and which is, which is unbelievable. Uh, Mr. Taylor, I'm gonna let you say a few words and then uh, we'll, we'll close out the evening. Yeah. yeah. Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, our panelists. It's great to see you again. And uh Thank you for taking some some of your valuable time to uh, to be here. I say to the students uh, all the time that there are two Trinity Paulings. There's the Trinity Pauling that exists right here and now uh, with the boys out on the quad and in the dorms and coming up from dinner and things like that. Uh, but then there's the Trinity Pauling that exists outside of this place, and that is in the experience and the connections that come from our alumni. And it's really important that those two Trinity Paulings are connected and they're well connected because, uh, you know, for our graduates, it's important that you see continuity with the school today that uh, that you can see, you, you know, it reflects your own experience. And for our students, it's really important that they see the graduates who are connected to the school because that that gives even greater validity to this concept of brotherhood and that they're part of something that uh, is larger than themselves uh, and that will exist beyond their their time here. I think, uh, Daniel, you weren't, I wasn't here when you graduated, but I was here with the three of you 
the others. And uh, and I'm sure I said to each of you uh, in the the day before graduation that uh, you know maybe it's stepping up that you know this is probably the last time you're going to be in the chapel with every single one of your classmates. And uh, and it's hard for students at the time to even visualize that because it is, you know, it, it's become part of the the day-to-day -day experience. Uh, but once you graduate, that bond stays there. It just, you know, it just gets bigger uh, and as it leaves here. So I want to thank you all for being connected. I want to thank you for sharing your stories and uh, and I hope you stay connected and it's great to see you again. Awesome. Thank you so yes, much. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, we appreciate your time. Everyone out there tonight on the webinar, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, uh, please don't hesitate. Reach out to myself, Tom Densford. Um, you can reach out to Jeff Beck in our admissions office. Um, you can reach out to Mr. Taylor. He welcomes um, a conversation there as well. But please do um, join us for our next webinar. Please looking out for it. Um, but check us out online. Um, and, and please, we have alumni, if you'd like to connect with some of our alumni here tonight or someone in the city where you are to hear more about Trinity Pauling, please do that. We would love to connect you. Thank you all. Have a good night and roll pride. Take care. Thanks, everybody.